I was assigned the DSP board. I remember that it had a large DSP, high-speed I.O., support circuitry and four power rails to run everything. It was not the first time I had done a board like this, nor was it the most complex design I've ever done. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd say it was a 6. As I remember it, the design process went pretty well. Hi, my name is David A, and I'm one of the Micro Module Development Managers at Linear Technology, and I'm going to talk to you today about Electromagnetic Interference, or EMI. More specifically, EMI emissions. EMI generally falls into two broad categories, conducted and radiated. Conducted emissions refers to the noise that is carried on wires or other conductors. Radiated EMI floats through the air. While conducted EMI has certainly caused enough heartache through the history of electronics, it is really radiated EMI that makes engineers cringe. We got our first prototypes and got the board to run through its basic functions pretty much right away. We had a little trouble when we started to run the DSP harder, but it was nothing a few extra decoupling caps didn't fix. When it came time to integrate the other cards, it was the same sort of thing. I recall one time when we found that the flash memory card was generating errors. It turned out that my card was spewing a little bit of noise, so we threw a few caps at the flash card input power, and that was that. One reason conducted EMI is easier to deal with is that it can be measured by test equipment generally available in labs or by rental. As a result, an engineer can have a good idea of the conducted EMI fairly early in the design cycle and take steps to reduce it if necessary. This is not the case with radiated EMI. In order to measure radiated EMI, you need a special purpose-built screen room and a whole bunch of equipment typically accessible only through a specialized lab. You have to have the product in its final configuration running its worst case operating mode in the final package. This means that the design is supposed to be finished before you can test it for radiated EMI. A few months passed while the software guys wrapped up the code and then we went to EMI testing. Our VP of engineering was really happy. He kept telling everybody how smoothly the project had gone so far. There were the usual hiccups, he said but we have been able to stay on schedule so far. The sales and marketing guys were happy too. They had a couple of big customers lined up, and that made our VC people really happy. One of the biggest contributors to electromagnetic noise in any design is the power system. Modern designs often require several voltage rails, and each rail is often regulated by a single switching power supply. Unfortunately, each one of these regulators is also a point source of radiated noise. If any one of these regulators emits too much EMI, for whatever reason, the system as a whole fails. At 4.30 p.m. I got the call. We had passed conducted emissions, but failed radiated, and all the board designers had to go over to the lab and support the troubleshooting. At first we thought it was the flash memory card because we would fail every time we did it right. My DSP board sourced the data for the right test, so I had to stick around. A few hours later, we realized that the noise was appearing when my DSP was putting the data packet together for the flash. It turned out to be the highest power consumption routine in the whole test. We made a quick software change to loop on the routine and confirmed it. More than that, from the frequencies that we were seeing, the noise was coming from the power supplies. By this time, it was late and everybody wanted to go home. I said I'd come back in the morning with a handful of decoupling caps. Linear technology has developed a series of electromagnetically compatible micro-module DC to DC converters. Like other products in our micro-module family, these parts are easy to use, but on top of that, they have been independently certified to meet the stringent requirements of EN55022 Class B. Let's take a look at them. The LTM8032 is a 36 volt in, 2 amp buck converter capable of generating up to 10 volts. It needs just two resistors, an input cap and an output cap to get going. And as you can see, it beats the EN55022 Class B limit by a wide margin. Here's the LTM8031, which is basically the 1 amp version of the 8032 I just described. It is also capable of 36 volts in, sourcing 1 amp up to 10 volts. It is pin compatible with the 8032 and has just as good a radiated emissions profile. 
The LTM8021 is a 36 volt in part and can source up to 500 milliamps to 5 volts. You can see that it too is EN55022 Class B compliant. The 8020 is our quietest micro module regulator, capable of providing 200 milliamps at 5 volts from 36 volts in. The caps didn't work. They made a difference in the EMI noise spectrum, but didn't fix the problem. Ferrite beads, transorbs, ground isolators, they all helped a little bit, but not enough. I have dozens of finger cuts from the copper tape I used when I tried to cover up the power supply chips. I tried everything, and nothing worked. We couldn't pass. So I gave up. I came home, and I've been here since. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, and I think I'm back in that EMI lab. Battling radiant EMI can be a nightmare. You can go almost crazy trying to deal with all the little radiators in your design. Often these radiators are the switching power supplies. So Linear Technology has developed a line of easy to use EN55022 Class B compliant micro module DC to DC converters to ease your power supply design right from the beginning of development. For more information, you can visit our website at www.linear.com. Thank you.